there's another thing that uh, about that uh, that um, non gravity uh, acceleration. acceleration that people is ex speculating a lot, and it was be after that Michio Kaku. Um, strategically two days before the perihelion coming to say that if the object accelerate after the perihelion or during and after the perihelion that will mean that it's uh, probably a spaceship but but i saw your analysis with uh, that uh, astrophysicist on, on nasa that was kindly doing the analysis from gpl horizons and we can see that acceleration. I'm not a scientist, so I ask you. There's some, the A1, the A2, and the A3. The A1 and A2 have numbers. Right. And the A3, it's zero. Right. D does that mean that the the movement of 3i Atlas during the perihelion moved left and right and accelerated, but not up and down? Yes. What does that mean, that study? Well, it means that there is no vertical uh, acceleration uh, outside of the plane of the of, of the orbit. Uh, now, um, in case um, you know of a natural comet, uh, the side of the comet that faces the sun gets uh, the heat and uh, loses mass. So you don't expect uh, much vertical acceleration. But sometimes comets develop jets that are pointed sideways. And you do get acceleration in all three dimensions. In this case, it was not. So, um, you know, uh, and I actually corresponded with uh, uh, the person who did the analysis. And he said that uh, he's waiting to, to get access to the full data set. And, and um, you know, it would be easy for us to measure the location, the position of the object in the sky within uh, the coming weeks. Because it's, as it moves, you know, the deviation from the expected path uh, would be even more significant. And the reason that JPL updated with these non-gravitational terms is just to allow us to forecast where it will be. So as it moves along, you know, we will get more data points and then we'll, first of all, test this forecast. Also, we will be able to tell if the acceleration intensifies or is getting smaller. I mean, the, it will be really interesting because a technological object will not necessarily stop uh, accelerating. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, a comet, you know, as soon as it's not exposed to as much uh, heat from the sun, it will uh, lose much less mass. So most of the acceleration, most of the boost will come closest to the sun. And um, I think that the coming weeks will be key and we should find out. What, what bothered me about high rise is not so much uh, that we will not know what the object is, it's just that this is not the way that science should be conducted. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be based on transparency. And also, scientists should be open-minded rather than very dogmatic and, and basically ridiculing uh, any alternatives to what they think the object is likely to be. And the reason I say that is, if it happens to be technological, it would have huge implications for humanity. And even if you assign a small probability for that, you must consider that possibility. And that's what, uh, you know, uh, very often... Uh, uh, intelligence agencies consider rare events that have a small likelihood because even if they have a small likelihood, they, they must be, con uh, we should not be surprised when they happen. Uh, however, in the context of science, scientists are used to uh, adapting the most likely explanation. And that works if you deal with an exploding star at the edge of the universe, it will have no impact on humanity. And obviously, if you are wrong, then nothing bad happens. So it makes a lot of sense for scientists usually to subscribe to the most likely explanation, but not in a case where you have a visitor to your backyard. In that case, if you are wrong and the visitor enters through your front door, that's too bad, okay, because it has huge implications. So I, my argument is that we should always keep on the table the possibility that interstellar objects might be technological and then collect as much data as possible, especially about those that show anomalies, those, those that do not line up with what we thought about comets and asteroids. Yeah, it feels like we are sinners because we create the possibility or consider the possibility of alien life out there. But coming back to the, the question about uh, the acceleration. So what you said and I understood was that, in fact, it moved left and right, three yeah. atlas, so it, it was apart from the sun. 
and it accelerated, right? Right. And, but not up and down according to, to right. NASA data. But what people want desperately to know, and they don't tell us, is what does that mean in terms of direction? So did it change a lot? Is it possible now that we'll be closer to Jupiter, for instance? Yeah. It says so I, I actually did the calculation and found that the, the reported non-gravitational acceleration is, does not amount to a mu much of a shift in the trajectory. It, uh, over a period of a month, it will shift by of all the 10 times the radius of the Earth. That's all. So that's very small compared to the Earth-Sun separation. So we are talking about a small, you know, it's only four arc seconds that they notice the deviation at four arc seconds, which, you know, a, an arc second is uh, uh, about uh, five times 10 to the minus six. Uh, it, it's less than 10 minus five. Uh, it's a very small correction uh, that they notice. Uh, in angle, and uh, also since the object is roughly at the uh, distance of, you know, twice the Earth-Sun separation, it also amounts to a small amount of displacement. And so we are talking about small displacement at this time, but it may, you know, we just have one uh, 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 set of data points, uh, and we have to watch. Uh, maybe that displacement will grow, uh, and that's what uh, I think uh, the the future data will will cl clarify. At the moment, the acceleration is not big enough for it to change course significantly and get very close to Jupiter. Uh, but um, let's watch and see where, where it's heading. And that would be really interesting if it comes close to Jupiter for two reasons. One, that uh, you know that may indicate that it's uh, it has a target. And second, uh, it will allow the Juno spacecraft near Jupiter to observe it much better um, because uh, I published a paper saying that Juno should try to get close to intercept three atlas. And that requires an amount of fuel that Juno had to start with, but it used most of the fuel. So unfortunately, it won't be able to intercept with three atlas. It could have, in principle, if it had all the fuel that it started with. Uh, but um, I spoke with the principal investigator of the Juno mission. Here is another NASA mission. And the principal investigator was very forthcoming, and I had exchange, uh, exchanges with him. And in this case, he told me that they will use the radio antenna that they have on Juno also to, to check for radio transmission. Uh, because one of the anomalies of uh, Three Atlas is that the wow signal uh, from 1977 came from the same, roughly the same direction in the sky as the arrival direction of Three Atlas within nine degrees. And uh, therefore, I alerted the radio observers and asked them to look at Three Atlas to see if there is any radio transmission from it. And I was told by them that they are monitoring it. So hopefully, we'll we'll see some data reported from radio observatories as well. We don't expect radio emission from a rock. Okay, um, right. So for the people that don't understand this very well. Juno is a probe that is around Jupiter that yes. can be and it will end uh, the the mission now going into Jupiter smashing into Jupiter. Well, it, was, it was supposed to smash into Jupiter in September, uh, you know, mm. a, a month and a half ago and uh, but, uh, you know, I because of that I wrote uh, a paper saying don't kill it, it can be useful. And again, uh, representative Anna Paulina Luna wrote a letter to the head of NASA and Sean Duffy and encouraged them to fund it at least until March uh, 2026 when uh, Three Atlas will come close to it. So, so uh, at the moment, as far as I know, it's still alive and hopefully it will take uh, data on Three Atlas. Hold on. Are you telling me that it was programmed to finish right now? The, to yeah, well, actually in, in, in mid-September. That was the original uh, timing. And uh, they wanted to give it a a kick so that it gets it falls into Jupiter and gets destroyed. Uh, and I said, don't give it a kick towards Jupiter, just give it a kick away from Jupiter just to intercept Three Atlas, which was possible if it had enough fuel. It could have collided with Three Atlas, but unfortunately they used most of the fuel, so they cannot get very close to Three Atlas, but they can still observe it. And as of now, as far as I know, this mission is still alive. Yeah, but what you are telling me is that they, while they are pretending it's not important and not showing any data to the public, they listened to you and the letter from the, the rep Luna 
and they act over Juno. So now they consider to use Juno to watch three Atlas in the future in November, I guess, in March, in, right? In March, March, in 16, March. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, I, I'm sure they are listening to what I say. The question is, are they doing what I say? And in the case of Juno, it looks like it's alive. So that's a good thing. And I wish they also listened about the high rise images, but apparently they, someone over there chose, you know, not to do it. And I'm, I don't know why, because I didn't get any information. 